Hello everybody. Well, after over 10 years of being online and YouTube videos and all the other social media channels and after all the years of science outreach, I am finally in a position to be able to offer reviews, reports, and other opinions on all kinds of various equipment available in the hobby of amateur astronomy. And today I'm going to start with this telescope right here, the Celestron Nexstar 5 SE Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. So stick around. <laughs> Now, if you're a beginner looking to get into the hobby of amateur astronomy, one of the things you're going to need to help you get started is a telescope that's easy to use and set up. And if you're an advanced amateur who's been at this for a while, well, then you want features. But this telescope right here can meet both users' needs. It doesn't do everything perfectly, but it gets enough things right that this little scope can satisfy both classes of amateur astronomers. But is this a good first-time telescope? Well, now I usually recommend that people who've never owned a telescope before spend less than $500 on it because they may not be sure they like the hobby and I really want people to get started easy and cheaply. So, as a first telescope, this might be overkill. But, even though this Nexstar 5SE is a bit above the $500 range, OPT I think is selling this for about 700 bucks, it's a little over what I usually recommend as a first-time scope. But, I have to say that if you want the go-to ability, and that is have the telescope find things for you once you've set it up, well, then I think the extra $200 is well spent. So, for the cost of a good DSLR, you're getting a great start into the hobby of amateur astronomy. For the beginner, this is a solid telescope. It's lightweight, easy to set up and use, and you I mean you can be up and running in a few minutes and it has a computerized go-to drive that will easily help you get acquainted with the night sky. And I think this is important for beginners because you don't want obstacles getting in the way of your deciding to go outside and observe. For example, if the telescope is huge, heavy, and difficult to use, you're not likely to go outside with it, especially on those dark, clear, cold nights like we're having lately. So I think ease of use is especially important. Okay, so this telescope is really very lightweight. It's easy to carry around. I can move it wherever I want to go, especially once it's set up on the tripod like this. But it also has a feature that I really like on this mount. This right here. This is an equatorial wedge right here, which on bigger telescopes costs a lot of money. And it comes with this particular telescope, so that's a really good thing. So having this allows you to run in polar mode, which is important if you're doing long exposure astrophotography with it. You line this arm up right here with the North Celestial Pole and it tracks the stars without field rotations. And for coatings, it's got some high-end star bright coatings on the corrector plate and the mirror. And these are anti-reflection coatings, which are really important because they help keep reflections down, allowing most of the light to pass through the optical path to the, to the eyepiece or the camera. You don't want to lose a lot of light to reflections, so this is a very good thing. You want to look for that in some of the better telescopes. Now, this is a 5-inch telescope, and I think that's about the minimum of an aperture that I would want for my own personal telescope. It's a good compromise between image brightness and portability, because I really like to be able to move these things around. I like to pick them up and go somewhere else. So portability is important to me to get under really dark skies. Now, one thing I wish I could do would be to disengage this drive, because I can move this up and down in declination, but not so much in azimuth. So I, am, I wish that I had that ability to move it around, but I understand why you can't. There's a lot of gears in here, and what you definitely don't want to ever do is start forcing this around. Always use the, the motorized keypad on here to move the telescope around, because you don't want to strip those gears in there. Also, i got to say I really like this finder scope. It's really simple to use. You just look through the bottom end, down through here, and what it does is it projects a little red dot in the center of the tube that you use to align to a bright, bright star or a planet. And what I do was I look through the finder scope with my right eye, like this, and I just keep my left eye open to see the larger portion of the sky. And then I align the red dot with whatever star it is I'm looking through. And once I've got that lined up, then I look through the eyepiece here. So when you first get the scope, take some time to find a bright star in the eyepiece and then adjust the finder uh, back and forth with these two little, we have two little adjustments here. When I was using it, I could line up, say, Deneb, for example, last night when I was outside doing the sky align on this or with Betelgeuse or with whatever star I have. Now the unit comes with a 25 millimeter plossel, uh, as well as a prism diagonal so that you can look through it uh, starting right away, and it's really good for visual observing. Now eventually you'll want to get more of these eyepieces with varying uh, magnifications, but this is a really good start. I mean, just using this setup, I was able to see the Andromeda Galaxy and the Orion Nebula, and even the Crab Nebula, although 
just barely. And after, especially after my eyes were good and dark adapted. So the star diagonal right here is a prism type, not a mirror, which doesn't give the best images, but again, you know, for the price, this is a really good diagonal. And the keypad is easy to use, it's easy to read at night, and the menus are really self-explanatory. So I think most beginners will be able to start using it right away. Now for more advanced amateurs who want to image, the go-to drive I found is pretty stable. Although I didn't test this for really long exposures, I was able to track Mars for 30 minutes or so without any real adjustment. So for a quick outing to get some images, this is a really great scope because of its weight and its portability, like I mentioned before. You can get outside really quickly and observe starting right away. Now aligning this scope with the night sky is also easy, and I've made a video on this with the skyline feature that you can see on a, up here. I've put a link up there, and there's also one in the description box. It does not have an onboard GPS, so you have to tell it where you are on the Earth manually by entering your location in the keypad, and if you want the scope to do it, you need an accessory uh, to do that. Which, you know, so it wasn't, while it wasn't too big of a pain to set this up, if you're moving around a lot, you'll want to get the optional GPS unit from Celestron to make this step really simple. All it is is just a, a GPS antenna and set up that tells the telescope where it is. And then there is Skyline, and if you're a beginner, you're going to love this. This is the way that you can easily find things in the night sky. And the cool thing is, you don't have to know anything about the night sky to do it. All you got to do is center three really bright things in the eyepiece, and each time you do that, you hit some buttons on the keypad uh, and you, to tell it where it is, and you move on to the next bright thing. So, as I said, I have a video on how to do this up here on how to use Skyline. It only takes about five or 10 minutes to set up, uh, maybe 15 if you've never done it before. Basically, all you have to know is you just have to pick three really bright things that are kind of far apart uh, in the sky and you'll get a much better alignment. But believe me, it takes a lot longer to talk about Skyline than it is to use it. So don't be intimidated, it's really quite easy. And once you've done that, you're ready to go outside and start observing things. And you do that by just selecting things on the keypad there's a star tour key for getting started, showing all kinds of cool things to see at, the, at night. Deep sky button shows you the nebulae, galaxies, and star clusters in the catalog. Solar system shows you the planets that are up that night. And, uh, and stars, the stars button, will <laughs> come as no shock to you, will show you stars. <laughs> now once you find something you want to see in the, in the keypad, all you do is hit enter and boom, the scope goes off to show you that wonder of the night sky. <laughs> Now, there's lots of other things you can do with this telescope, like attach a camera, uh, you can adjust the backlash correction on the drive, and all the things you'd expect to be able to do if you've been using a go-to telescope for a while. Now, some things I didn't care about this was that the handset was very easy to fall off. <laughs> it kept falling off at night, and so what I ended up doing was just, most of the time, just leaving it dangling while I was observing to uh, keep it from getting in the way. I also had to keep entering the time in the keypad every time I turned it on. Now, I don't know you know, what that was about. I mean, I left the batteries in the whole time, but anyway, I had to keep entering it in each time I turned it on. So, and, uh, so I assume this isn't an issue if you have the GPS accessory, something I wasn't able to test. And then there's the batteries. <laughs> you need eight double A's to run this, and they didn't last very long during heavy use. So I would get the optional 12 volt adapter if you can, or a bigger battery to attach this to. You can get these from Celestron as well. They're just little optional things. And these, uh, because if you're just using these, on really cold nights, these little double A's are going to underperform. I've already gone through like three sets of eight. So I really wish I had had, you know, that extra power supply. Also, another thing I didn't like was the lens cap. The lens cover is very loose. It kept falling off all the time. And, um, but, you know, I see this with all these telescopes all the time. So do yourself a favor. Get, you some, electri get some electrical tape, okay, and put it around the sides here so that when you put this on, this stays on a little more snug. Otherwise, when you do this, it tends to fall off really simply, really easy. Okay, so it's a good way to sort of keep it on there a little bit more snug. You know, but overall, my gripes with this uh, telescope were all my, was all minor stuff. The views are very good through the IP. The Andromeda and the Orion Nebula was very bright. And while I did see some small coma at the edge of the field of view, it wasn't all that noticeable, and it's well within what most of these commercial scopes produce. Coma is that thing when the stars at the edge of the very edge of the field of view look like little tiny comets, and you know they have little tails, and that's called coma. And it's pretty common with this design, with schmidt cassegrain design of telescopes. But you know it wasn't bad with this with this uh, with this particular one. 
and Mars was luscious <laughs> through the scope. The red color and the disk of the planet was very easy to make out, and if I had a cheap camera, I could probably extract, I could have probably extracted some surface detail on that night as well. So there you go, folks. If you're looking for a quality, go-to computerized scope that's easy to carry around and set up, then this is a great one to have. To me, as I keep saying, portability has always been king because if the telescope is huge and heavy, then I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I'll stay inside and watch Netflix. But with this scope, it's easy to go outside and spend the evening with some old friends. And when people ask me what the best scope is, I always say, the best scope is the one that gets used. And I guarantee you'll get out and use this one. And full disclosure, this video was endorsed by OPT Telescopes, a world leader in telescopes and accessories for both professionals and amateur astronomers. And they have provided this telescope for me to, to use to, write, to give you this report for. Uh, and also, if you go to the link in the description box below, as well as maybe use this, uh, use this handy dandy code they gave me, you'll get a slight discount and I will get credit for the sale. So. Thank you so much uh, to OPT Telescopes for providing this telescope, and I hope to send a lot more of these videos your way coming soon. Well, that is it for now, space fans. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep looking up.